And speaking of bad government actors, the Biden administration has a new way to get around that pesky First Amendment. We live in a world where misinformation poses an imminent and insidious threat to our nation's health. We've increased uh, disinformation research and tracking uh, within the Surgeon General's office. We're flagging problematic posts for Facebook uh, that spread disinformation. How refreshing that they're saying this right out in the open now. <laughs> Joining me now, Matt Walsh, host of The Matt Walsh Show. Matt, uh, there's a political, a word for this political system which the government controls uh, corporate actions. And they're trying to tell us that this is just this, we don't control the big tech companies. What does this tell you? Yeah, I like how Jen Psaki just threw that in there. Oh, yeah, we're working with Facebook. Like, hold on a second. What do you mean you're working with Facebook? They're supposed to be a private company. And, and for the Surgeon General to be, to be talking, as he did today, about how we're going to label misinformation as some sort of public health threat, well, what that means is we're going to label speech as a physical threat. And I, thought, I also thought it was interesting that, the, that the, the Surgeon General said that he was talking about misinformation. He said, well, uh, you know, there's misinformation, for example, that uh, made people resistant to masks. Well, hold on a second. The Surgeon General's office was the one who said a year, a year ago we shouldn't wear masks. Fauci said a year ago we shouldn't wear masks. This just shows you the problem that, you know, a year ago, if you had said, let's, let's wear masks, that's labeled misinformation. Now you say the opposite, and that's in misinformation because... The government, they are the, the scientific authorities, and whatever they say is now the scientific truth, apparently. Now, the, you mentioned the Surgeon General. Uh, let's let the folks hear more from this bright light. They can identify people who are super spreaders of misinformation uh, and limit the information that they share. Number two, they can take the data that they have that tells them us how much misinformation is really spreading, who it's affecting. They can share that publicly and transparently uh, with researchers. Uh, Matt, publicly and transparently, I got to tell you, I think they are killing uh, the push for the vaccine with these types of heavy-handed tactics. They're, I think it's making people more skeptical, not less. Yeah, well, I, I think in, in general with the vaccine, you know, the, the thing is that everybody in the country knows that the vaccine is out there. They know all the basic facts about it. They know that they can go get it if they want to. Right. So I, I tend to respect people's intelligence, and I tend to think that, uh, number one, whether you get the vaccine or not, none of my business, it's your decision. Number two, if you've decided not to get it, you have your reasons, and that's it. So there's probably not a lot that could be said to change your mind. I mean, you could bring Olivia Rodrigo up or a pop star <laughs> up there. Maybe, maybe there will be someone who said, you know what, I'm, I, I wasn't sure about the vaccine, but now that Olivia Rodrigo said something, I think I'll do it. Maybe that'll happen. I doubt it. But I agree with you. If you are going to convince anyone, uh, these sorts of tactics aren't going to do it because it just makes it seem like you've got something to hide, number one, and number two, you know, why do you have to force it on us like this if it's uh, if it's really a good idea to begin with? Why can't you just the, give us the facts? Maybe they should. I think they should just open a bureau of disinformation. They should just have they should just actually institutionalize their fact checking at the White House through big tech. Let's not go through the formality of, of saying you're working with just do it yourselves at this point. Matt, thank you.